Hello friends, this is Homer Knox of MenTeachingMen.com. In this video, we're going to be looking at the life of the first king of Israel, King Saul. The King James and New American Standard Version Bibles will be mainly used for a scripture translation in this video. King Saul. Who was this guy and why are we studying him? Samuel, Saul, and King David, these three men in the Bible had their lives intertwined with God and with each other. King Saul, first king of Israel. The meaning of the name Saul is asked for or inquired of God. Saul was born in the tribe of Benjamin. He lived from approximately 1095 BC. 1 Samuel 13.1 Saul was 30 years old when he began to reign, and he reigned 42 years over Israel. Saul's background. Saul's father's name was Kish. Scriptures describes him as a mighty man of valor. Saul's father Kish was powerful and wealthy. First Samuel 9 2. A tall, good looking guy. He, Kish, had a son whose name was Saul, a choice and handsome man, and there was not a more handsome person than he among the sons of Israel. From his shoulders and up, he was taller than any of the people. First Samuel 921. Saul's humbleness as a young man. Saul replied, Am I not a Benjamite of the smallest of the tribes of Israel, and my father the least of all the families of the tribe of Benjamin? 1 Samuel 916. God chooses Saul as the first king. About this time tomorrow I will send you Samuel a man from the land of Benjamin, and you shall anoint him to be prince over my people Israel. Saul was called, chosen by God. He didn't volunteer. Romans 8.28 And we know that God causes all things to work together for good to those who love God, to those who are called, according to his purpose. We are all called by God. Our job while we are here is to find out what God has called us for and then to do it. 1 Samuel 10.1 Samuel anoints Saul king in secret. Then Samuel took the flask of oil, poured it on his head, kissed him, and said, Has not the Lord anointed you a ruler over his inheritance? 1 Samuel 10.6 Saul is changed into another man after his anointing. Then the Spirit of the Lord will come upon you mightily, and you shall prophesy with them, and be changed into another man. 1 Samuel 10.9 God gave him another heart. The simple country man was transformed into the king of Israel. A remarkable change suddenly took place in his whole demeanor. 2 Corinthians 5.17 Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creature. The old things passed away. Behold, new things have come. An experience with God will change anyone. How wonderful. God, please change me for your glory. 1 Samuel 10.1 King Saul anointed in private. Then Samuel took a vial of oil, 
and poured it upon his head, and kissed him, and said, Is it not because the Lord has anointed thee to be captain over his inheritance? 1 Samuel 10, 17-21 Confirmed king by God in public. Saul is confirmed ruler over Israel by his selection by Lot, a method of inquiring of God. 1 Samuel 10, 22 and 24. Saul, humble, shy, awkward. Behold, he is hiding himself by the baggage. So the people shouted and said, Long live the king. 1 Samuel 11, 6. The Amorites attack one of the cities of Israel. Then the Spirit of God came upon Saul mightily. First Samuel 11, 11. Saul, successful military leader. Saul put the people in three companies, and they came into the midst of the camp at the morning watch and struck down the Amorites until the heat of the day. Those who survived were scattered so that no two of them were left together. 1 Samuel 13.5 Philistines attack Israel. Now the Philistines assembled to fight with Israel, 30,000 chariots and 6,000 horses, and people like the sand which is on the seashore in abundance. First Samuel 13, 8 to 10. God commanded King Saul to wait for Samuel to offer offerings before the battle. King Saul is fearful and decides not to wait. Second Corinthians 12, 9. And he, Jesus, said unto me, My grace is sufficient for thee, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. We can all get fearful over many things. Let's trust in God for our deliverance. He will deliver us. First Samuel 13, 11. But Samuel said to Saul, What have you done? Oops. 1 Samuel 13, 13 to 14. Samuel said to Saul, You have acted foolishly and not kept the commandment of the Lord your God, which he commanded you. For now the Lord would have established your kingdom over Israel forever, but now your kingdom shall not endure. First Samuel 14, 1 to 23. Saul's second great military success. God delivers Israel from the Philistines, started by an act of bravery from King Saul's son, Jonathan. Even with this victory, we see the start of ongoing errors in Saul's judgment and rebellion against God's commands. 1 Samuel 14.47 Constant Warfare Against Israel When Saul had taken the kingdom over Israel, he fought against all his enemies on every side, and wherever he turned, he routed them. 1 Samuel 14.48 Saul, Valiant Warrior He, Saul, acted valiantly and defeated the Amalites and delivered Israel from the hands of those who plundered them. 1 Samuel 15.3 Thus says the Lord of hosts, Now go strike Amalek, and utterly destroy all that he has, and do not spare, but put to death both man and woman, child and infant, ox and sheep, camel and donkey. This command was the test of Saul's moral qualifications for being king. 1 Samuel 15.9 but Saul and the people spared King Agag and the best of the sheep, the oxen, the fatlings, the lambs, 
and all that was good, and were not willing to destroy them utterly, but everything despised and worthless they utterly destroyed. Another opportunity for obedience, but failure by Saul. First Samuel 15, 10-11 Then the word of the Lord came to Samuel, saying, I regret that I have made Saul king, for he has turned back from following me and has not carried out my commands. We will have many tests in our life. Some we will pass and some we will fail. Ask God's help to be successful in all our tests in life. 1 Samuel 16, 14 to 15. Now the spirit of the Lord departed from Saul, and an evil spirit from the Lord terrorized him. Saul's servant then said to him, Behold, now an evil spirit from God is terrorizing you. 1 Samuel 16:16. 16, 16. Saul didn't seek God to resolve. Let them seek a man who is a skillful player on the harp, and it shall come about when the evil spirit from God is on you, that he shall play the harp with his hand, and you will be well. We should always turn to God first with any problems we have. He is our only help in all matters. Although God can use other persons and situations to help us. First Samuel 16:18. Behold, I have seen a son of Jesse, who is skillful in play, a man of valor, a man of war, prudent in speech, and a man of good presence, and the Lord is with him. So interesting that they choose David, who will be King Saul's replacement. Wonderful experience for the shepherd boy who will be the future king of Israel. God put David in a position just where he needed to be to learn to be a leader of God's people Israel. God has you and me in a position or place for this period that we need to be at this time. First Samuel 16:21 And David came to Saul and stood before him and he loved him greatly and he became his armor bearer First Samuel 17:33 The Philistine giant Goliath And Saul said to David Thou art not able to go against this Philistine to fight with him for thou art but a youth, and he a man of war from his youth. Interesting that King Saul sends David, a youth, out to fight Goliath, and he stays behind and watches. What happened to the valiant king? 1 Samuel 18, 6 to 7. And it came to pass as they came, when David was returned from the slaughter of the Philistine, that the women came out of all the cities of Israel. The women sang as they played and said, Saul has slain his thousands and David his ten thousands. 1 Samuel 18, 9 King Saul allows a spirit of jealousy. King Saul looked at David with suspicion from that day on. Spirit of Jealousy We have all been jealous of someone or something at one time. We need to rebuke that spirit of jealousy, reject those thoughts of jealousy every time that spirit appears. It is not of God, but the enemy. Saul was unwilling to do this. Saul's enmity ripening into a purpose of murdering David, which at different times he tried in vain to carry out. How unfortunate. To the end of Saul's life, his focus was on killing David. Our God protected David from the wrath of Saul. 
King Saul's death. First Samuel 28.1 Now it came about in those days that the Philistines gathered their armed camp for war to fight against Israel. 1 Samuel 28, 5-6 When Saul saw the camp of the Philistines, he was afraid and his heart trembled greatly. When Saul inquired of the Lord, the Lord did not answer him either by dreams or by Urim or by prophets. Saul is in a spot what to do. Instead of continuing to cry out to God, confessing his sin, Saul continues in sin with a forbidden request. Speak to a medium. First Samuel 28, 8 and 11. Conjure up for me, please, and bring up for me whom I shall name to you. Then the woman said, Whom shall I bring up for you? And he said, Bring up Samuel for me. Of course, this sin goes wrong for King Saul as Samuel pronounces a horrible judgment against him and his family. First Samuel 31.1 Now the Philistines were fighting against Israel, and the men of Israel fled from before the Philistines and fell slain on Mount Gilboa. First Samuel 31.3-4 The battle went heavily against Saul, and the archers hit him, and he was badly wounded. So Saul took his sword and fell on it. He died. The Philistines also kill three sons of Saul. Would it had not been better for King Saul to say, I quit. David can now be king. It is always better to release those areas of sin in our lives than to let them hang on to our detriment. 1 Samuel 31, 8-9 It came about on the next day when the Philistines came to strip the slain that they found Saul and his three sons fallen on Mount Geboa. They cut off his head and stripped off his weapons and sent them through the land of the Philistines. 2 Samuel 21, 12-14 David went and took the bones of Saul and the bones of Jonathan his son, where the Philistines had hanged them on the day the Philistines struck down. The problems for Saul's family didn't end with the death of Saul. Second Samuel 21.1 Now there was a famine in the days of David for three years, year after year. And David sought the presence of the Lord. And the Lord said, It is for Saul and his bloody house, because he put the Gibeonites to death. Second Samuel 21.2-3 So the king called the Gibeonites and spoke to them. Thus David said to the Gibeonites, what shall I do for you, and how can I make atonement that you may bless the inheritance of the Lord? Second Samuel 21, 6 and 9 The Gibeonites' response Let seven men from his sons be given to us, and we will hang them before the Lord. Then he, King David, gave them into the hands of the Gibeonites, and they hanged them in the mountain before the Lord, so that the seven of them fell together. 2 Samuel 21.13 He, King David, brought up the bones of Saul and the bones of Jonathan, his son, from there, and they gathered the bones of those who had been hanged. 2 Samuel 21.14 they buried the bones of Saul 
and Jonathan his son in the country of Benjamin, in the grave of Kish his father. What a sad ending for a family that had such great promise. God wants and desires better for us as children. Put away those areas of your life that cause the Holy Spirit displeasure. Obedience brings the fruit of joy. Conclusions Life of King Saul Saul started out as a humble ruler of his people. Saul was valiant warrior, great military leader. Pride crept into King Saul's life. Saul accepted the spirit of jealousy in his heart. It was all downhill after his disobedience started. Disobedient, hatred, superstition, suicidal. How sad for someone with such great potential. Thanks so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please consider subscribing to the Men Teaching Men YouTube channel. This video is dedicated to the honor of Pastor Ken and Pam Keller, Fairview Brethren in Christ Church, New Cumberland, Pennsylvania. Hello friends, this is Homer Knox again. I hope you enjoyed this video teaching. The question I have for you is, are you born again? Do you know Jesus as your personal Savior? If not, why not? Why not? Jesus was born of a virgin. He lived a sinless life. He suffered and died under Pontius Pilate and the Romans. He was buried and he rose from the dead on the third day. He's now ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. There is salvation in no one else, no one else. And so if this has stirred your heart and you would like to receive Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, please pray with me. Dear Jesus, please come into my heart. Forgive me of all my sins, all my sins by your precious blood. I accept you as my personal Savior. Thank you for saving me. Thank you for cleansing me. Thank you for my home in heaven. Thank you for giving me the Holy Spirit and making me a new creature. Amen and amen. Well, if you prayed that prayer from your heart, you're now born again, you're a Christian. Welcome. Welcome to the family. If you prayed this prayer after slipping away, you're now part of the family. You're back in the fold. Welcome. Congratulations. There's another teaching on the menteachingmen.com website entitled, I Just Got Saved. And that video will help you with your new walk in Jesus Christ. God bless you. God bless you. Amen.